podcast. I, um, I always appreciate when people have the courage to just like DM me on Instagram and be like, Hey, I have a story to tell and it needs to be said. And, you know, it's, it's, I don't know. So that's kind of how, how we met and connected. And I'm just excited to be able to have this opportunity to hear your story because, um, I know it's amazing. So why don't we go ahead and start with just hearing a little bit about you and then we can jump into it. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. It's good to be here. Um, uh, like uh, Ashley said, my name is Laurel. I currently live here in Utah Valley, but I consider Southern California my home. And um, I'm the middle child of five. And, me too. Uh, oh, oh, right. Middle child syndrome. Woo woo. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, um, yeah, I grew up playing sports basketball, soccer. I even went surfing in the ocean with my neighbors growing up. And so that's me. And I also like to do comedy, improv, performing. So I'm, I consider myself well-rounded. Yeah. And I I currently uh, work at Mox Tech here in Orem, which is a place of um, microscopic manufacturing production. So a lot of tiny, tiny work. Awesome. But yeah, so that's me in a gist. So. Awesome. Well, yeah, let's go ahead and um, jump into it. I'd love to hear, you know, what your what where it all started, you know, what your earlier days in the church looked like, kind of what your testimony was like um, when you were younger, and then go from there. All right. Well, I was uh, born in the covenant. For those who don't know what that is, um, at my uh, parents were sealed in a temple and that's um those are sacred ordinances that we have and then i was born later and uh, um yeah i've always gone to church and uh, um not gonna lie the church was my favorite because i always got snacks as a kid i'm always a foodie but uh yeah i i always kind of relied on my parents testimony for the longest time and um and I would like to say it was strong before I served my mission, but it got stronger when I was on my mission. And that kind of starts, uh, and that my mission is the start of my story that I'm going to share with you today. So I was called, it, ironically, to a California San Diego mission. Awesome. And <laughs> I got called there after my parents and my family moved to Utah. So I went back to my home state and let alone just an hour south of where I grew up. And um, and then uh, the MTC was a very, very trying time, but I saw many tender mercies. It was a trying time because I was sick for, for the full three weeks that I was assigned to be there. And uh, it got to the point where they thought I had appendicitis, and so they sent me to the ER conference weekend of 2012, 10 years ago. And um, and then nothing was, they didn't find anything that was wrong. But the first tender of mercy was, I was laying there in the hospital bed in the ER and I looked over, I saw my uncle Brian, he works for the EMT. And it, it was just that seeing him there was so, like I knew that God was watching over me and he had called my parents and I got to talk with my parents for a minute or two. And then, um, so I went about my merry way back to the NTC from the hospital, and then I never got better. Uh, and then um, I was supposed to be there for three weeks, but they kept me an extra week just to get me better. So it was difficult sending uh, my district on their merry way, and then there it was just me. <laughs> so, um it was it was a very trying time, but it's amazing that what the Lord has in store for us to help us be instrument in his hands because um they put me with a district that was two weeks behind me, and it turned out that they really needed help. All of them were struggling as a district, and so they were calling me like Laurel, you are answered well, not Laurel sister great house and you are an answer to our prayers, and that humbled me because I was very, very bitter. Uh, like three weeks at the NTC is hard. <laughs> so, and uh, then I, the week later, I got better. Everything was great. I was like finally feeling myself. And then I got um, 
sent to San Diego. Um, I was put in a trio because I arrived a week later after transfers. And then I was seeing so many miracles, but um, a week after I got to San Diego, I was starting to get sick again. Like, what is the deal here? And um, and then it, it was interesting because I prayed what Heavenly Father's will for me was. And then, um, then uh, I opened up my scriptures. I, I like to test the waters. Like, you know that, like, um, exercise when people say, okay, I'm going to pray, then open up my scriptures and just start reading. So that's what I did. And I ended up in a DNC 75 and it talked about, it's my will that you serve me. Mm-hmm. So I stuck it out and uh, it was uh, that next week, it was a miracle in itself because I got to invite two, two females to commit to baptism. Wow. And so the Lord let me be fill up to par during that week. But then after that week, my, uh, I was sick again. And then it turned out that I was sent home, um, four weeks later after I arrived in San Diego. And so I was, it was really hard. I was adapting, trying to adapt to be home. And uh, I, every time I thought about going to school, it just did not feel right. So I knew that I was going to go back on my mission somehow, some way. And the, luckily, the Lord um, uh, inspired my church leaders to invite me to uh, be with the sister missionaries at Utah State University and be with them two or three times a week. And then the other days, I would be a temple worker at the Logan Temple. And it, it, it kind of caught me surprised because 10 years ago, it, you didn't really see young people being a temple worker at all. So it was, it was the most humbling experience. And then things that I, I learned how um, I got the medicine I needed. I got the coping mechanisms I needed. And then I was sent back on my merry way back to San Diego of April, 2014. I just felt I was on the top of the world. It was the best. And then um then i was i i saw a lot of um miracles and it just it seemed so much light and it's seeing um people's lives change because the, the lord has put people in my path to help them and uh, that will forever be one of the biggest miracles and tender mercies as a missionary and so i got back to um like I said before, San Diego, and in April of 2014, things were going great. I felt good. Then June rolled around, like, oh, no, I'm getting sick again. No. And so July 22nd, 2014, I was sent home again. My heart sank. It hurt so bad. Um, and my anxieties just went through the roof thinking, what are my parents going to think? What are my church friends going to think? What is my, like, all the people just just said goodbye to me. And now, obviously, it's human nature to question, like, or be curious, which I understood. And then when I saw my mother, she was the first one I had coming down that Salt Lake escalator. And it, she just gave me the tightest hug and said, Laurel, we are so proud of you. That's another miracle. I, it's like, it's interesting on how the adversary likes to put thoughts in our mind that tells us lies. But like my mother proved it wrong. And um, so I was like, all right, my mission is done. Then for the first six months back, I was doing really well or so I thought, um, I was giving talks mainly about the atonement in the high council Sundays in various wards in my stake. And then I just kind of put on that pretend face that I was okay, but I know deep down that I, I was suffering because back then, it, like, or even still now, there's a stigma like, oh, I must be a failure if I don't finish the anticipated time on my mission. But it shouldn't be that way. The Lord recognizes our efforts in all that we do. And so 
Um, January of 2015 rolled around. I was at a very vulnerable spot, and uh, there were thoughts in my mind that were that said, Laurel, you are a failure. You don't belong in this church. You are better off without it. And uh, uh, for the longest time, I thought those words were reasonable because I thought those were my own words, but I'll touch base on that later. Um, and so I went on my merry way. I decided to step aside. And during that time, I had a, um, a self-discovery journey of having same gender attraction. Like, okay, I'll explore it. So I did. Um, I dated a woman for four years. Um, I thought I was happy. Uh, and then um, I'm not dismissing anybody else's happiness. This is just my own journey, just to clarify for my friends out there. But um, yeah, so I dated several different women and it, some of them almost ended up in marriages. We There was definitely marriage talk and I... It's like I felt on cloud nine with it all. And throughout throughout it all, uh, there were some people that were not the greatest influences that I uh, um, surrounded myself with. They were saying, God doesn't love you. There's no reason for you to even attempt to follow Jesus. Um, there's no way for you to go back. And so might as well just live what you thought, live your truth. And so um, then I was like, well, that's kind of lofty. <laughs> that's quite the thing to say when I'm just trying to figure out my own truth. And like in my mind thinking like, who are they to think that they know what my truth is? Cause they haven't exactly been part of my journey, let alone been in my shoes, but yeah, similar experiences, but not pinpoint at all, you know? And so um, then I started to realize that I, a true Laurel was disappearing. Uh, I distanced myself from my family because I thought that they didn't love me. And uh, then I was just uh, like thinking like, I just want to feel love from my family. And uh, I want to pinpoint that um, after years of contemplating that my family loved me all along. It's just the adversary that um, wanted to put those thoughts in my mind that I wasn't loved so I could grow um, more distant from my family in the first place. And so going back, I just thought, I just want to feel love from my family. Then I got this phone call from my mother saying, Laurel, your dad and I want to invite you and your girlfriend over for dinner and games in a couple of weeks. That struck me a chord because that was the first time ever that has happened. <laughs> so it's like, it's like, and then my mind like, oh, great. Awesome. But like the Lord is so in our lives. They, he recognizes what we want and need. And he brings those miracles and tender mercies. And then, so with that kind gesture, my parents did for me, I, my heart began to soften. Those blinders started to become a, uh, layers started become peeling off and off and off and um, started to feel that love and to believe it again and to know it. And so, and then at that time I, uh, I was up at Utah state and then, um, and then I was involved with the women's basketball program up there. And thinking like, okay, yeah, this is my chance to get on the team. It's going to be good. And it's just live my dreams. And then after the first year I was there helping them, I had this reoccurring thought, move to Orem. Like, what? <laughs> it's like, why would I do such a thing? <laughs> it's like, I have it all here. Like, move to Orem. It came, it came to the point that it would not leave me alone. And once it did finally leave me alone was when I found a place to live in Orem. <laughs> it's like, and so I thought like, um, a lot of people thought I uh, was moving down to Orem cause that's where my former girlfriend lived. But I knew that was not the case. I knew there was something deep down 
that I was about to learn, um, but didn't want to approach it yet. <laughs> so, so I moved down to Orem. Um, of course, relationships don't work out, which is fine. And so I just decided that that was a good time for me to work on myself, to find ways to heal my soul that has been torn into a million pieces of um, different sources, different people telling me on how I should live away from following Jesus. And, uh, it, and so it was quite the journey. And so I moved in with good roommates. They knew what I was up to and they were very loving and kind. And, um, and, it, uh, they served me and it, they were there to talk with me. And, um, and then when the, when I moved down here, um, it took several years to get going back with the church though. So. But, um, and early, here's, here's one of my favorite miracles. Uh, in early of January of 2018, I hit rock bottom. I lost myself. I lost my sense of my divine identity as a daughter of God. I just, oh man, I, I wouldn't wish that feeling upon my worst enemy. And, um, so I was alone in my bedroom early. I don't remember what exact day it was, but early on, um, early in the morning of a cold January day, um, the thought of prayer came to mind. Pray to Heavenly Father, who you haven't talked to in years. And, um, and, then soon after that thought came, I became paralyzed. The um, as if the like as if a dark room can't get any darker, it did. Um, and then I just heard laughing, like somebody laughing at my pain. Someone that was saying in my mind. It's best to end your life or never follow Jesus again. Like, I know that's not from Heavenly Father. Goodness. It's like, and then it was so, like, it was just so beyond dark, beyond comprehension. And then when I, uh, when soon, like, which seemed like the timing seemed like eternity, but it's probably happened all in a couple of minutes time span. And then I felt this gentle nudge on my shoulder that helped me kneel down from my paralyzed body. And nobody else was in there. And then I was just crying. I was sobbing. I just like kneeled down and tried to talk in my mind, but I knew Heavenly Father knew what I was trying to say. And in my mind, I was uh, trying to say, Heavenly Father, are you there? Do you love me? I'm sorry. I'm sorry for betraying our relationship. I'm sorry for uh, going against what I've taught on my mission six months prior. And it was kind of like, will you forgive me? And then as my, that peaceful and calming light appeared just as fast as that darkness vanished. The whole room changed. And uh, I heard Heavenly Father saying in my mind, Laurel, my child, I love you. I need you. Will you please come back? And then I finally got to sleep, and then it took me a little while. And then another miracle happened. Earlier in my story, I mentioned of moving to Orem, Utah, and not knowing why. It's not really about the destination, but about the people you <laughs> that helps you. 
And so my best friend, Heather, she was my Relief Society president. She was my ministering sister for is forever. She's like people rotated with different other sisters in the ward, but somehow, some way, Heather always was mine. And she is the most Christ-like person I know. She, it, I wish you could hear her voicemail. It says like, you are awesome. God loves you. And I'll try to get back to you, you know? And so, and then just by her countenance, her, her light was like really, really bright around her. It's, she, I aspire to be like her one day. And um, so after that prayer, I decided two weeks later that I was going to go back to church. I was going to go um, trying to get my temple recommend back. And, um, and I mentioned Heather because two days later, after I knelt down in prayer and told Heavenly Father I was going to come back, Heather Peterson died in a tragic car accident. I was like, who am I going to sit by in church that encouraged me to come? I can't do this alone. I, I know Christ is there, but like someone physical there to be there with me. The next week, leading up to her funeral, the sisters that served with her and at the Relief Society president told me, Laurel, the Lord told us to keep Heather with you, with the ministering. And that just has softened my heart because it just shows that Heavenly Father is aware of us and he preserved her life here on earth long enough to, Heavenly Father said, okay, I trust Laurel, she could go forward. It's time to bring Heather home. And, um, and so that week leading up to her funeral was the hardest week. Like, all the doubts and fears came. How can I do this without Heather? I don't know if I could do it. And um, one night, I had a dream. Usually, when I try to sort things out in my mind, normally I like to go on walks. Um, so in my dream, I was taking a walk around the city center temple. I was alone, or so I, th or so I thought. I looked up, and Heather was right there with me. Wow. She, and she said, Laurel, you got to keep going. I'm there with you. Heavenly Father and Jesus Christ are always there with, with you. I will never leave your side. And then she gave me, she's a notorious for her best hugs. So in the dream, she gave me a hug. And then she's like, Laurel, keep going, keep walking. But I got to go. And I, I have other work to do. But no, I'll be there with you every step of the way. Then when I woke up, it's like, okay, let's do this. Heather and I together. And that just shows how angels on both sides of the veil are there to be with us, whether it's through good times and bad. And then, um, so I got my temple recommended back in April of 2018, my sister and I went back to the temple. She was there for, with me. And uh, I remember after the endowment session and entering the celestial room, all I heard was welcome home world. And it's like, I will never be, I will never forget that pure joy and love I experienced that day. And then my bishop says, Laurel, how about you become a temple worker? Like, what? I just came back. <laughs> and then I, I tried it. I thought it was a good thing to do. So I became a temple worker and I was normally assigned for two years, but I'm still a temple worker to this day. Wow. And, um, 
it definitely helps me keep me grounded and that's a miracle in itself the temples are miracles and it answers to prayers are miracles and going through that experiences i've been through these past years it gives me so much hope hope to me is like a beautiful sunrise uh, new beginnings bright colorful full of light joy and uh, um and then i also learned that faith over fear is very necessary because <laughs> faith just it shows us that okay i trust god not even though i don't know what tomorrow may bring or like what heavenly father will ask of me or it's like he says here laurel do this but not knowing why kind of like when i had that impression to move to orem i didn't know why until a couple years later but i do have a firm testimony of the church of jesus christ the latter-day saints that heavenly father loves each and every one of his children and that's just something that I would like to get across in this podcast. No matter who you are, what background you are, what, what, whichever way you decide to live, the love is always constant and it's always there. So. I love that so much. What an incredible story that is. I am so happy that you shared that with us. Um, so what what do you think was one of the most challenging parts of coming back like what what was probably the hardest thing um <clears throat> the temptations that the adversary always puts on me uh in the in a recent talk from president nelson he talks about getting on the covenant path and staying there and uh, he's he mentions it doesn't mean that your life is going to get any easier. I could testify of that. My, uh, my, honestly, my life has been harder because I came back. Not because it's a bad thing. I don't see it as a bad thing for life to be hard, but I just feel like it's harder because in my journey and in my life of what I've come to know and to be true is that the hardest things are the things of the most worth fighting yeah. for yep i i had um alba i don't know if you heard her episode but yeah she yeah. i just love her so much and that was something that she mentioned was you know she talked about when she left and she's like okay well it's a lot easier because i have my sundays that are free um mm -hmm. i don't have to pay tithing i can wear whatever right. i want um right I, uh, ha I don't have to serve in callings and all these things. And then she says, well, and then she thought about it and said, what in life that is worth something comes easy. Exactly. Is, exactly. If it's like a, you know, if we put in work, it's like for school, for a degree that doesn't come easy or for a job that we put in effort, you know, if it's, if it's, a uh, something that's rewarding, it's, it doesn't come easy. And, um, and it's so true. The church is that it does, we do a lot in the church and, um, it keeps us really busy and, but the, it is worth the joy that comes from serving in, yeah. in the Lord's church. So I yeah. love that. Yeah, serving in the Lord's cause is the best thing ever. Yeah, it was interesting because while you were just saying what you just said, it kind of reminded me like it's just so hard to stay because the adversary is working so hard to pull you back. Yeah, every day, every day I go through that, and uh, um, and then when I thought I was free away from the church, looking back, man, I I was trapped. Yep. I lost my sense of identity. I lost my happiness. My true self went somewhere else. I don't know where she went, but like looking to get her back was a lesson in itself. But like coming back is just, even though it's super hard every day, it's worth every moment of fighting for it. I relate with that so much. I, I shared on the podcast with Leo, um, this last podcast that, um, you know, 
I thought that leaving the church, I was going to be so free. I thought that that meant that I could do whatever, you know, I, I don't have all of these restrictions that are keeping me all bound. But the truth was that I was never so trapped as I was when I was out. I was like, I can drink alcohol and do drugs and all of these things because I don't have anything that's stopping me. And I, the, yeah, I was, I was in total chains and, um, it's, it's interesting. I love that you say like you lost your identity and it's when I was out, it was like, I was trying to find all of these things to make me, um, somebody, or I was trying to like identify myself with all of these different things. And like, I am so close to my true self now than I've been, you know, I'm more like my self when I was like a kid and I, I was so like pure and, you know, like that's more me now than it ever was before. And I think it's because I, you know, I'm just in touch with my true self and what truly matters to me. And I've experienced a change of heart and I've, I've been able to come back to what matters the most to me. And it sounds like you have a very similar experience to that. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's, it's just incredible. And you know what? God's love is real. And um, don't let other people make you think otherwise, because that will throw you in fool for a loop. Yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, so yeah, it's been quite the learning experience. I still learn new things every day. And, um, and just having that um, I call it a gift of like Heavenly Father letting me uh, see others the way that he sees them. And because um, I went through what I went through. And then it's like our journeys are not a mistake, even though we like to think they may be, but they're not. Uh, it's because they lead us to where we are meant to be. Yeah. And yeah. it's and then I've been told over and over and over again, like in the temple and different priesthood blessings saying your journey, the way it panned out was supposed to happen that way. You're supposed to go through X, Y, and Z to mm -hmm. get to where you're supposed to be. Heavenly father is refining all of his children in preparation for the second coming of the Lord. And I think that's like one of the best gifts, the yeah. hardest gift, but one of the best. Yeah. So. I agree so much. I, I look at my past as like a drug addict and all of these things. And like, now it's like, it's all come full circle. And I'm, you know, I wouldn't recommend that path, like that path to anybody <laughs> because I barely made it out alive, but it has taught me and refined me and, you know, and heavenly father will work all things to the good of those who love him. And I've experienced that in my life yeah. so much. Um, what advice would you have for somebody that got sent home early from their mission? Um, throw the stigma away really quick. Uh, don't please don't think you're a failure. I've had uh, several other friends that have got sat home and I had good talks with them. And I remember like in the mission, uh, I'm pretty sure in every mission call it says and it is anticipated you serve for this X amount of time. Doesn't mean you have to. And so um, the Lord recognizes your efforts. He loves that you even considered a mission because you felt it was right for you at that time. There are lessons to be learned. Um, and just from that, learn how to start at the foundation. If you lose your testimony because you feel like a failure, start as a foundation of a, learning how to gain that relationship or not gain, because you already have it. It's more like uh, help it grow, like get to know Heavenly Father in Jesus Christ. Learn, um, talk with them in, uh, in different ways, like in prayer, or like if you're going on a walk, just talk to them. They want to hear from you. And um, yeah, just learn it learn from them on how they see you that has made all the difference. I love that so much. Um, so another question for you, what advice would you give for a parent or a family member 
of somebody, how they can help their child come back to the church or how they can help not cause like a, a barrier. Just meet them where they're at. Love them. Invite them to things. Don't, don't. I, I, I hate saying the word don't, but <laughs> uh, it's just uh, have them be a part of the family. Uh, don't treat them any more special than it anyone else treat them as equals mm -hmm. uh and like and share like be prayerful um pray to the heavenly father to know how to help his child come back and um there's a purpose and timing for everything timing may come short or take forever and so just trust in the lord and his timing easier said than done we all know that mm -hmm. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. yeah. but yeah, just be prayerful and continue um, doing what you're doing and stay on the covenant path and the Lord will make up the rest. I love that so much. Well, Laurel, your story is absolutely incredible. And I'm so grateful that you reached yeah. out to me and I'm so grateful to share this on the podcast. Do yeah, you have any, so any final words before we wrap up? Anything that you want to leave listeners with? Yeah. Specifically to my LGBTQ brothers and sisters, you may feel that the Lord doesn't love you. You may feel a little bit of confusion. You may feel a little bit of doubt. But know that Heavenly Father in Jesus Christ loves you very, very, very much. I trust me, <laughs> they do. And uh, you are not a mistake. You are. A child of God and having that divine identity sets you uh, apart and it, as we all are children of God and um, just uh, if, if you are still believing in Jesus continue that relationship with him let him guide you counsel with him and know that you are loved and beyond measure more than you'll ever know. I love that. That was the perfect, perfect ending. Thank you so much, Laurel. Thank you so much, Ash. You're so good to meet you. Yeah, good to meet you. Thank you so much for being a supporter of the Comeback Podcast and listening to our episodes. It would mean so much to us if you would like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. It helps other people be able to find us and we want to share this message to everyone.